In this edition of Unbox, we'll open the 2022 vinyl box set for Celtic Frost called Dance Macabre, a collection of this legendary Swiss extreme metal band's releases on Noise Records, minus one, of course, as well as bonus music, collectibles, and a 40-page book. Stay tuned. What's in the box? So my history with this band actually begins with its precursor, Hellhammer. I know I bought Apocalyptic Raids when it was brand new, and to be honest, I really didn't get it. In fact, at times the record was downright hilarious, but once they became Celtic Frost, I would say that better days were certainly ahead, to put it mildly. I likewise bought each of the Celtic Frost albums on one format or the other throughout the 1980s. Yes, even Cold Lake, which I believe I had on cassette, and which isn't in this box set, by the way, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Unfortunately, I never saw this band live, though I did see Celtic Frost founder Tom G. Warrior, or Thomas Gabriel Fisher, if you prefer, in his follow-up band, Trypticon. In fact, in 2019, I did meet Tom backstage during the Quebec Death Fest 2 in Montreal, Canada. Amazingly talented guy in whatever band he's in. So, that's pretty much my story. As for the box set, here's what you can expect. The Morbid Tales EP from 1984, that's one LP on red and black galaxy vinyl. The Emperor's Return EP from 1985, which is back on vinyl for the first time in 37 years. That's one LP on green and black galaxy vinyl. Tomegatherion, their album from 1985 is also here, it's one LP on silver and black swirl vinyl. The Tragic Serenades EP from 1986, which is a 12 inch EP, this time on pink and black swirl vinyl. Also, the Into the Pandemonium album from 1987, that's one LP on orange and beige galaxy vinyl. The I Won't Dance 12-inch EP from 1987, back on vinyl for the first time in 35 years. That's one LP white and black swirl vinyl. As well as the Collector's Celtic Frost 12-inch single from 1987, also back on vinyl, this time for the first time in 35 years. One LP on marble vinyl with silk screen print on the B-side. We're also going to get the Visual Aggression 7-inch single with new artwork and on gray vinyl. And the Grave Hill Bunker Rehearsals, that's their 4-track cassette demo from 1984. Took excited to hear that for sure. We're also going to get a 12 by 12 40-page book of brand new interviews with founding member Tom G. Warrior and drummer Reed St. Mark. Also contains rare and previously unseen photos from the era. We're also going to get a heptagram figurine USB drive containing MP3 audio tracks of the albums including the bonus tracks. We'll also get a two-sided A2 poster, a Necromaniac Union Fan Club enamel badge, and a Dance Macabre So On woven patch. So with all of that, let's open the box. All right, so let's get this guy open. Be pretty easy. There we go, you don't need to see that. Box in a box, which is really great because Noise Records generally knows how to pack things. We had that with the Voivod box set as well. And I did buy both directly from Noise Records. So we'll just get this open here. Okay. And there's the box set. And more box away. So pretty cool. Uh, looks like there is some foil stamping here, along with some uh, nice gloss finish here. Just figure flip over the back here for you. Take a look at all of the vinyl that we're gonna take a look at. Pretty cool. Let's get these open. So one thing I wanted to do was go through the things in this box in a bit of a chronological order. I thought it'd be a little more interesting that way. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to pull everything out and then we're going to talk about things in the order they were more or less released. So as I said, I have everything laid out here and we're going to go through it in chronological order. Why not? Starting with the Grave Hill Bunkers rehearsal tape from 1984. 
Uh, the Greyfield Bunker was a basement rehearsal room in Burkeville, Switzerland, whose only apparent claim to fame is its connection to Hellhammer and later Celtic Frost. Uh, the demo tracks were available as bonus tracks on both a European CD reissue of Morbid Tales, as well as on a vinyl reissue of the album, both in 2017. However, this might be its first official release on cassette, which I suppose gives it more of a demo feel. Pretty cool. We'll get back to these in a little bit, but I do want to talk about the albums. Starting with Morbid Tales, this is their debut EP from 1984. Uh, classic tracks here, such as Into the Crypt of Rays and Return to the Eve. Uh, CD releases of this often included the Emperor's Return EP, which led some to believe that Morbid Angel was, uh, or Morbid Tales rather, was originally a full length release. Uh, likewise, with the US release of Morbid Tales, with two of the four Emperor's Return songs on it, such being Dethroned Emperor and Morbid Tales. But the original European version was an EP or mini album, if you prefer. Take a look at the inner sleeve here, both sides, as well as the vinyl. Very nice. And there you go with that. Next up is the Emperor's Return EP from 1985. Uh, this is the EP with Circle of the Tyrants, possibly one of the best Celtic Frost songs ever. It's probably been covered by numerous bands over the decades, most notably Obituary, but also Opeth and Propane, believe it or not. Uh, we should talk about the artwork. Uh, it is by uh, Phil Lavere, who also did covers for Creator and Death Row, among others, in case this style looks a tad familiar. Um, initial pressings came with a black and white poster. Kind of want to see if we got that. Looks like we did not. That's all right. I'll take a quick look at all of this here. We got lyrics and, of course, some more credits and lyrics and stuff like that. Uh, it looks like Noise hadn't reissued this on vinyl since 1988 or even licensed it out to Metal Blade uh, since then, so it's really great to see it here. And this is a bit of a green and black. It's kind of hard to see in the light, but maybe you can see it, maybe you can't, but there you go. Uh, next up is the Visual Aggression 7-inch right here. Uh, the track is originally from the Emperor's Return EP, but I really don't remember this single at all back then. I can't really find a listing of it anywhere either, so maybe this is an exclusive, not really sure. You can let me know in the comments otherwise. There's the vinyl for you right there. And the B-side, of course. Not much more to say about it, because again, I don't really remember this back in the classic era. But again, it might have been available. Who knows? Of course, next is to Megatherion, the first full-length release for them, 1985. Um, in addition to the redo of Circle of the Tyrants on here, which is my favorite of the two versions, we also get my very favorite Celtic Frost track, The Usurper. I also love Jewel Throne a great deal, and the rest of the album kills as well. Uh, cover art, uh, and this art here, is by H.R. Giger. Uh, this piece is called Victory 3, uh, and the cover is Satan 1. It was painted in 1977. Uh, Giger and Fisher had a bit of a friendship, and Fisher actually became Giger's assistant starting in 2007. I should also mention that, like Morbid Tales, Sabigatherion had a vinyl reissue as well in 2017 from Noise Records. So if you only wanted to get this album and not the entire box set, that's still an option. But of course, if you're a fan like me and you want to get this, uh, you want to get this, obviously. There's the... There you go. And the vinyl. It's this wonderful black and gray. And there's the other side for you. Pretty cool. After that, we have the Tragic Serenades 12 inch EP from 1986. Uh, this is definitely a favorite of mine. I have it on cassette. I've had it since the uh, early days. Uh, this is a three song EP with tracks originally appearing elsewhere, but here either re-records or remixes. Again, I had this cassette when it was new. Came to really love these versions, especially Return to the Eve. Uh, last release of this was on Picture Disc as a Record Store Day reissue in 2018, which I have and is framed on my wall, but that's a Picture Disc, and I'd much rather hear this on actual vinyl, so super glad to have this. There's the inner sleeve for you, and the vinyl. 
So black and gray. It has a little bit more of a blue tint than the other one does. There's also some pink hiding in here, which is kind of interesting. You can see that in the label as well. Very, very cool. Next up is Into the Pandemonium. This is their second full-length album. came out in 1987. Uh, it's interesting that this is their second full-length album. It's mind-blowing because uh, it, you think of all the EPs before that it just seems like there were more LPs than there were at this point, but clearly that's not the case. Of course, many remember this one for opening with Vo Wall of Voodoo cover, Mexican Radio. Uh, I mean, straight out the gate, this lets us know that Celtic Frost was going to get a little avant-garde going forward, I guess you could say. Um, I do dig this album for what it is, but it's also no to Megatherion. But now having it, perhaps some spins in modern day will further bolster my appreciation of it. You know, we'll see. Uh, really cool gatefold here. Uh, this too got the vinyl reissue treatment in 2017, along with some Sessions tracks added, making that a two LP set. Would have been nice to see those tracks here as well, but I suppose you can't have everything. So once again, some credits on the inner sleeve and some lyrics and all that. And of course the vinyl is this fantastic color. It's kind of a splatter marble kind of design. There we are, very cool. So next up is the I Won't Dance 12 inch EP, came out in 1987. Uh, this track is from Into the Pandemonium, as is the B-side song One in Their Pride. It uh, doesn't look like this ever had a U.S. release and hadn't been reissued on any format since 1987, so it's definitely a bonus here. It looks like you also get Sorrows of the Moon as well on the B-side. That's pretty cool. Um, back in 1987, it was available in both 7-inch and 12-inch versions. Incidentally, the photo on the front is of an Italian statue and not an actual naked lady. There you go. Uh, this is an oddball single from a kind of uneven album, to be honest, but it is kind of cool to have it here. There's the vinyl for you. A little black and white and gray going on. A little more black there on that side. Next up is the Celtic Frost Collector's uh, Disc, or the Collector's Celtic Frost. I guess we can put it in that order as well. 12-inch single from 1987. Um, only one song on this, such being in the chapel, in the moonlight, with nothing on the B side. Uh, the 1987 original was limited to 1,000 copies, and those are pretty hard to find as a result, so some fans might dig finding this here. Uh, it is a fun track, though a curiosity. Uh, not much else to say about it. Uh, we take a look at the vinyl here. Uh, it is kind of, it is clear, and there is a print on the back there for you. Uh, this side is unplayable, so there you go. We should talk about the book next. Uh, this book looks pretty amazing. We could just move that over here. I need more table. There we go. So very cool. We'll just take a gander through this book here. Some great old pictures, for sure. Very early days of the band. Really looking forward to reading some of these uh, interviews and uh, some of these little snippets about the early days of this band, for sure. Even in color, how about that? Definitely, this is going to be quite the read. Some of the later years with them as well, when we get more towards uh, the later 80s. Got some pictures of that in here as well. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. And there's the book for you, with the skull right there as well. So let's talk about some of the other goodies that are in here. There are quite a few. 
as we move more and more stuff around. We do get a poster. It's like a fairly large poster. I don't know how much of it we're going to be able to get on camera. There's the one side there. And it is two-sided. So there it is sideways. But we can also look at it that way. There you go. Of course, there are some goodies in here as well. Uh, we could talk about the, the pin itself. Pretty cool. It's got a standard pin on the back there for you. We also have the woven patch, the Dance Macabre woven patch. Thought it'd be bigger, but that's okay. It's this small. Why not? And we've got the USB stick shaped like the heptagram. That is going to require me to cut it. There we go. And it should open up. And there's the USB port containing all of those bonus tracks. Pretty cool. And that looks to be it. So just a little extra in the box here. We've got the heptagram hiding on the back. Uh, it is under the promo sheet I showed earlier. Uh, you can get that promo sheet off. It's stuck with uh, four pieces of, it's basically rubber cement. If you're really careful and you kind of finesse it off, you can get that sheet off and put it in the box for safekeeping. But you do get that cool heptagram design on the back. Very cool. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about the box, uh, the front of the box itself. There is a little bit of dropout in some of the black here and there. Um, Metal Mickey talked about this a bit on his channel when he got the box set. Uh, he wasn't very pleased with it. Others might not be as well. Um, I think it does give it a little bit of a worn look, though I don't think it's entirely intentional. It might bug you. It might not bug you. But just know that going in that that might happen to you as well. So we should also talk about what's not in this box. Obviously, their 1988 album, Coal Lake. Uh, to say that that album was a musical departure for the band might be a bit of an understatement. Uh, Cold Lake saw the band dipping into the glam metal of the late 80s, at least to some extent, though an argument could be made for Cold Lake being a bit more metal, trad metal influence rather, but either way, it's not what fans expected at all, and many did shun the record. I mean, the band disavows it as well and actually dropped it from their catalog back in the late 1990s, so there's that. So overall, with tax and shipping from Noise Records directly, I paid about 258 US dollars for it. Uh, Merch Bar has it for 196 plus shipping. Uh, Revolver is overcharging at 265 plus shipping. Pop Market has it for 203 plus shipping, and Amazon at about 192 if you have Prime. So if you shop around, you could save yourself as much as 70 dollars, more or less. Also, there is a glow-in-the-dark version of this box set out there. Nuclear Blast Europe has it, though not sure who else. I think if you want every record to be glow-in-the-dark specifically instead of the different colored variants I just showed you, and you're, and you're enough of a rabid Celtic Frost fan to want both, then there you go. So although I do have an OG copy of Morbid Tales, it really is great to have everything in this box, including the masterpiece known as Tomegatherion, though I also have a real love and nostalgia for the Tragic Serenades EP, so... Nice to have that too. Of course, I definitely want to know what you think about this box set. What was your favorite item here? Maybe you're thinking about picking one up, and if you already have one, let me know if you're satisfied with the purchase. Let me know any of that and all other things that come to mind about the box in the comments below. And of course, if this is your first time here and you're wondering what I do besides box sets, my name is Matt. This is the Accusation Network, where each and every week I do videos on metal vinyl collecting in general, but I also cover the subjects of classic and modern metal. If that sounds good. Definitely give this a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and share my videos with some of your friends. And of course, if you've been with me for quite a while and you want to support me in a more involved capacity, definitely check out our Patreon page. That's at patreon.com slash the accusation network. I have more than a couple tiers there. You can definitely choose to join one of those. I show these videos up to seven days early. I also have some exclusive content. You should definitely go to that page, check out the tiers, and see how you can contribute. But other than that, I definitely thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.